from uh, one of the VPs, Wayne Mackey. And, you know, the conversation goes, hey, I know we have a meeting with you um, sometime this week. I just wanted to get you prepared for the meeting. Um, also, you have a lot of work ahead of you. And I said, a lot of work ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Okay. He goes, welcome to the National Football League. Uh, and I just went nuts. I asked him, hey, are you punking me? You got to be kidding. You know, I've just been grinding for so long at this. And just, just to, it's just an honor to be able to join the National Football League. Maya Chaka joins Sarah Thomas as the second female NFL official, first black female NFL official. And, you know, the the more that it happens, hopefully we get to the point where it isn't a Today Show story, Miles. That's the goal. It's just it's normal. Exactly. And look, I think that we've seen across the league now diversity wins. I mean, let's look at what Bruce Arians staff was and look at all of the different faces that were on Bruce Arians staff. The more we can see that, I think the better off we'll be. Absolutely. Uh, so good news for the NFL. But but for all of these things, it's, hey, somebody's got to be first. And then hopefully it becomes just something that isn't even discussed. It isn't even noticed. It's no big deal. It's just, hey, best person for the job. That's who it is. And we move forward. All right, let's move forward with some of these questions. Warren NW on Twitter asks, doesn't even ask, three words, Russ to Carolina. I assume he's not talking about the possibility of Russell Okung re-signing with the Panthers or staying there. I assume he's talking about Scott Fitterer, the new GM who came from Seattle, working out a deal to get Russell Wilson to the Panthers. And Miles, here's the problem. The list of four teams that was provided to the world last week by Russell Wilson's agent did not include the Panthers. So the Panthers need not apply. Yeah, I, that's what I would say to that, too. I mean, is I think Russell Wilson made it pretty clear, or at least his agent made it pretty clear for him, which teams that he actually would want to go to. And even though Carolina, I think, would certainly be interested in Russell Wilson, should Russell Wilson be interested in them, and they don't have any interest, and Russell Wilson doesn't want to go there because he has that no-trade clause, it doesn't seem like the chances are very high uh, that Russell Wilson could go to Carolina, unfortunately, for our friend there. Miles, I I still hold out the possibility that Mark Rogers, Russell Wilson's agent, did not supply the full list of teams and that he's holding a couple back so it looks like Russell capitulated or he, you know, he he wasn't as stubborn as just four teams would suggest that he relented, that he compromised in order to get the trade. So, uh, you know, whether it's the Jets, whether it's the Panthers, I I just wonder whether or not the true list isn't ultimately longer than four teams. We'll we'll see if that's the case, if there's even any trade discussions involving Russell Wilson. Enma Perez 09, is it more likely that the Patriots sign a new quarterback or draft one at 15? Your thoughts? Yes. I mean, I feel like they need uh, they need to bring in some sort of veteran quarterback who can at least start week one in case they don't have the guy that they really want available at 15 for them to be able to choose. So I think I'm not really answering the question properly. You're saying both. I, You're saying both. You're yeah, saying both. I am. I, uh, yes, I, because I feel like that's the way that they should do it. Look, from everything that we've heard about Jarrett Stidham, it doesn't seem like he's going to be the guy there, that Cam Newton is a free agent, and maybe there's a possibility that Cam Newton comes back, but that would then be signing a free agent quarterback. So, yeah, I, I think that they probably should do both. I think it would behoove them to do both, and I guess we'll see if they end up doing that. Both is a fair answer. It, it kind of reminds me of the time that I was uh, at the at the fast food restaurant in line behind a guy who I think had been engaged in some of Chris Sims' favorite activities, and they asked him here to go, and he said, "Yeah." But uh, but in this case, it works. It didn't work there, but but it 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 does work here. Um, hey hey, you know, there's been some chatter about Mac Jones and the Patriots. I'm not sure Mac Jones is going to be on the board when the Patriots draft at number 15, but uh, they got to do something because what. They did last year, obviously didn't work, didn't get them to the playoffs. They were still 7-9, and but this year, at some point, Tom Brady's coming back to town as the quarterback of the Buccaneers, and he's bringing Gronk, and he's bringing the Buccaneers, and you better be ready with someone that can go toe-to-toe with Tom Brady because it's probably the only time you're going to face him 
because they they do this once every four years, although now with the 17th game, there's a chance they would meet more frequently than that. You have to assume this is the only time the Patriots will ever play Tom Brady. they got to have a quarterback that they feel good about for that game. All right, A-Red Zone out. Does the expected flood of cuts mean we'll see less teams using the franchise tag this year, Miles? What do you think? Well, I think it depends on if they're using it for the first time or whether they're using it on a player for the second time. Because we were talking about this in the first segment with somebody like Justin Simmons as opposed to uh, Taylor Moten, right? When it's Simmons, he's getting the tag for the second time, so it doesn't have anything to do with the salary cap. It's a 20% raise. If it's Moten, he's getting the franchise tag for the first time, so it only has to do – it's a percentage of what the salary cap is. So – I, again, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm doing a very good job here, Mike, of actually answering the questions, but I think it, it depends on where guys are because if you really want to keep somebody based on what the salary cap is, it could be okay. Now, uh, I don't know if you saw PFT Live this morning, but I got completely twisted up on one topic and started into the other topic. So trust me, you're doing better than I was this morning. I'll say <laughs> this it's apples and oranges because the stars are still going to get paid. They're not the ones who are going to get squeezed. Franchise tag, you're going to apply it if you have a guy that you want to keep. And you'll just cut somebody else if you have to to have the cap space available to keep that guy that you want to have. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.